This is a stimulus and social security update. Got some important update to share with you with inflation cooling. Is this a good thing or bad thing for social security recipients? I'll go over that article. SNAP benefits are returning to pre-COVID levels coming in February, just a few days away. And President Biden made a big speech on the economy and said a few things like this. You're going to cut your social, they want to cut your social security and Medicare. No, this is the God's truth. It's almost unbelievable. And beyond that, they're actually threatening to have us default on the American debt, a debt that's been accumulated over 230 years. So I'm going to fact check that and also give you the Republican perspective. $914 checks going out in a few days. I'll give you some other important updates as well. Hope you're having a wonderful weekend. If you appreciate the fact-based fast pace update, hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel for more daily straight to the point updates on matters that financially matter to you. So inflation is cooling. Will that be uh, bad news for social security recipients in 2024? So social security cost of living adjustments are tied directly to inflation. If the rate of inflation continues to slow, 2024's social security raise may not be anywhere close to boost seniors get <clears throat> excuse me in 2023 so why are we talking about 2024 it's so far away but uh anyways less inflation could mean less of a raise for next year which means 2023 if we focus on now this could be the year where social security recipients get the most ahead because if inflation is going down and the coal is at 8.7 percent that's looking good but 2024 it may just return back to pre-inflation numbers in terms of the cola uh, or there could be some social security reform bills passed in 2023, which could completely change the whole um, uh, formula of how the COLA is is uh, is created. So will lower levels of inflation lead to a stingy social security raise? Most likely, yes. Uh, if, if inflation does go down a lot, it, the rate for COLA is probably going to go down as well, which is basically what this article is saying here. Uh, SNAP benefits returning to pre-COVID amounts in February. So come February, it looks like the uh, U.S. is no longer in a state of a national emergency, which means that the SNAP benefits are going to go back down. They did go down for a lot of different states, but not all of them yet. Uh, almost, uh, after almost three years, the amount of aid provided to low-income families com to combat food insecurity through Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program, also known as SNAP, will return to pre-pandemic levels. The emergency allotments allowed SNAP households to receive an additional $95 or more in benefits. The emergency allotments have already ended in 17 states, including... Uh, 17 states here. I'm not going to mention them all. Uh, and then in South Carolina, the emergency allotments will expire after the January payment is issued. And for the remaining 32 states, plus Washington, D.C., Guam, and Virgin Islands, the extra funding will end with the March benefit. So... Yeah, it's basically coming to an end. Let me know down in the comments below if you got that extra SNAP money. Was it good? Are you going to miss it? Was it helping out? Do you think it should last a little longer uh, because of high food prices? Let me know your thoughts on that. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Social Security update. Direct SSI payments worth $914 arriving in three days. So if you're on SSI, those payments are coming on February 1st, just a few days away. Up to $914 uh, is, is what the new amount would be, the new highest amount would be. And fact check. Biden makes false and misleading claims in economic speech. So I was surprised to see this, especially on CNN, uh, since CNN leans a little left and President Biden is on the left as well. Uh, I'm actually surprised that they pointed out a lot of false statements in President Biden's speech. So there's actually a lot here. I'm just going to go over a few of like the money ones and stuff. So infrastructure projects touting the bipartisan infrastructure law he signed in 2021. Biden said last year we funded 700,000 major construction projects, 700,000 all across America from highways to airports to bridges, tunnels, uh, broadband. So Biden's 700,000 figure is wildly inaccurate. It adds an extra two zeros to the correct figure Biden used in a speech last week. And the White House has also used before 7,000 
projects. The White House acknowledged his misstatement later on Thursday. So he said 700,000. Really, it was just 7,000. A cap on seniors' drug spending. Biden said, well, here's the deal. I put a, we put a cap and it's now in effect now in effect as of January 1st of $2,000 a year on prescription drug costs for seniors. This is an important one. So uh, facts first, Biden's claims that this cap is now in effect and that it came into effect on January 1st are false. The $2,000 annual cap contained in Inflation Reduction Act that Biden signed last year on Medicare Part D enrollees, out-of-pocket spending on covered prescription drugs, takes effect in 2025. So I'm not sure if President Biden was just going off the cuff here or someone, you know, messed with the teleprompter, but yeah, it's the uh, cap on drugs is not until 2025, which is really far away. Billionaires and taxes. Uh, Biden said Republicans want to cut taxes for billionaires who pay virtually 3% of their income, now 3% they pay. Uh, False. Biden's 3% claim is incorrect. For the second time in less than a week, Biden inaccurately described a 2021 finding from economists in his administration that the wealthiest 400 billionaire families paid an average of 8.2% of their income in federal individual income taxes between 2010 and 2018. So that, yeah, that one's kind of weird. Biden and the federal deficit. So, Uh, Biden said that his administration has taken a different path and boasted, as a result, the last two years, my administration, we cut the deficit by $1.7 trillion, the largest reduction in debt in American history. Is that true? So let's hear the truth here. Biden's boast leaves out important context. It is true that the federal deficit fell by a total of $1.7 trillion under Biden in 2021 and 2022 fiscal years, including a record $1.4 trillion drop in 2022. But it is highly questionable how much credit Biden deserves for this reduction. Biden did not mention that primary reason the deficit fell so substantially was that it had skyrocketed to a record high number under Trump in 2020 because of bipartisan emergency pandemic relief spending, then fell as expected as the spending expired as planned. So I guess President Biden taking uh, credit for that when... You know, I don't don't think it was either Trump or Biden. It could have just been anyone. It's just how it worked. Uh, Yeah, there's there's so many more, so many more fact checks. Uh, I'll I'll do one more here. See if I could find the one. Yeah. All right. Let's do the uh, unemployment one. All right. So Biden said that. The unemployment rates for black and Hispanic Americans are near record lows and that the unemployment rate for people with disabilities is the lowest ever recorded and the lowest ever in history. Here's the facts. Biden's claims are accurate, though it's worth noting that the unemployment rate for people with disabilities has only been released by the government since 2008. So I guess that is kind of true there. Uh, But anyways, take a look at what the Republican perspective is on cutting Social Security, if that's going to happen, as well as uh, the real facts of what's going on in in the government, according to the Republican perspective. Uh, Meanwhile, you've got the president and Democrats using scare tactics in a new push uh, to raise the debt ceiling. Watch this. You're going to cut your Social Security. They want to cut your Social Security and Medicare. No, this is the God's truth. It's almost unbelievable. And beyond that, they're actually threatening to have us default on the American debt, a debt that's been accumulated over 230 years. What in God's name would the Americans give up the progress we've made for the chaos they're suggesting? Not on my watch. I will veto everything they send us. Wow, we know for a fact that House Speaker Kevin McCarthy said that there will be no cuts to Social Security and Medicare. Uh, Should Biden be taking this victory lap on his economic plans? I mean, he's just lying. There's a couple of lies to to parse out here. First of all, we're not going to default on the debt. That's not the Republican plan. The Republican plan is to say, okay, let's raise the debt ceiling, but we have to have some spending measures in place that put us on a sustainable debt trajectory. That's just responsible spending, right? If you got a bunch of bills all of a sudden at the end of the month and you're like, whoa. 
I spent way too much on my credit card. Okay, so I'm going to pay off my credit card, but I've really got to rein in my spending. That's what a normal person, a normal household would do. That's the Republican plan. Now, Biden's bringing up Social Security and Medicare. No, that's, that's not even on our agenda. Let's be clear. Who's going to cut Medicare and Social Security? It's Democrats. You know why? Because they're not going to try and solve this problem until they go insolvent. When those programs go insolvent, automatic benefit cuts occur. That's on Biden, that's on Democrats. Let's, let's be clear, in the early 2000s, if we had taken up George Bush's Social Security plan, Social Security would be solvent right now. People wouldn't have to worry about it. But Democrats told us that we were going to throw granny off of a cliff. They, they, they scared the American people. They used scare tactics. They're doing it now because they refuse to solve these problems. He's lying on multiple fronts, and it's only going to hurt American seniors and the American people. Yeah. Congressman, I, I want to get your take on how you're going to figure this out and, and, and come up with solutions, because your colleagues have said that you want to go back to 2022 spending levels. If you go back to 2022 spending levels, that's a, a cut in defense spending. Do you really want to cut defense spending right now while China is rising and uh, Russia is so aggressive on Ukraine? How do you square this circle in terms of raising the debt ceiling, yes, but also putting boundaries in place for the next fiscal year spending? Well, you, you look at non-defense discretionary spending, and it's increased double-digit percentages over the last few years. It's increased massively. It's very easy to find cuts there. I, I personally do not want to cut defense spending. It doesn't need to increase in this exorbitant manner, but you don't need to cut it either. And it doesn't necessarily mean that, that this particular spend, the budget plan means de, uh, cutting defense spending. It just has to go through regular order, and it will go through regular order. It will go through the committees. It will go through each appropriations bill, and we'll fight it out as as it goes so I, I'm not as worried about it I, I, the, these these supposed rules that we've talked about are they, they don't necessarily pertain to just defense spending so I, I think we can I think we can get on the right track here well Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez yesterday or this week said that she wants a wide open border she wants uh, this administration to overtake and uh, reverse Title 42 and she also is blaming the Trump tax cuts and Donald Trump on all of this debt. Watch this. Congress, something quickly on the debt limit. Uh, Democrats have been in charge for the past two years. Do you think Democrats have spent too much money? Um, I think the largest contributor to the debt ceiling or to our deficit has been the Trump tax cuts. But I gotta go. Sorry. The Trump tax cuts, Congressman, your thoughts? She's very confused. We, we all know this. Um, so right after the, the, the Trump tax cuts, uh, the federal government received a record amount of revenue. Year after year after year <laughs> after year. That's so it's right. just wrong. It's just wrong. I mean, it's just, it's just not true. We, we, yeah. Look, our, the, the majority of our spending comes from mandatory spending. Uh, about 70% is from Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, and interest on the debt. The rest of the 30% is the discretionary stuff that we argue about every year. About half of that is defense sp spending. So you, you do have very little to work with. If you don't get our major programs on a sustainable trajectory, well, then you, you, you're... you're you're, you're, you're going to put our path, you're going to put our country on an unsustainable trajectory when it comes to debt. It really is yeah. that simple. And we do need to do a better job educating the American people on, on really what the problems are. And, and we have to have adult conversations on how to fix them. So what are your thoughts on that? Uh, let me know down in the comments below. And that is all the news that I have for you today to hopefully cheer you up a bit. Here's my daughter Bella's tip of the day. Oh, hi guys, I didn't see you there. Uh, just so you know, you guys are so, you guys are, you guys are great to me, you guys are special to me, I need you here beside me, and you are so nice, you know why, cause, cause you're so nice right now. Thank you so much for watching, appreciate all of your support, so Bella dominated yesterday at her swim meet. So she had a swim meet yesterday and she raced in four heats. She won first place three out of the four heats, which is amazing. It's the first time she's ever won anything and she completely dominated. She's been trying really hard at swimming lately, uh, practicing even on days that she didn't have practice. So just kind of showing up with uh, with my mom, with uh, her mom, my wife, Christine. Um, but yeah, she just dominated. So, so proud of her. Uh, yeah, she did a great job there. But uh, yeah, ho hopefully you have a great rest of your weekend. If you want to check out any of my other videos, click right up here and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, be safe. Thank you for watching.